Good morning, University Christian Church. This is Edna Turnblad. You know, Tracy's mother. I'm glad you're all here for the theology of Hairspray. It's a musical, you know. Won a few Tony Awards. We sing a few songs, maybe dance a little. And you're all invited. So poof up that hair and get ready for a Sunday worship service like never before. Because you know what they say. The bigger the hair, the closer to Jesus. Amen? Can I get an amen? I said, can I get an amen? Now, that's more like it. Enjoy! <laughs> oh, 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 woke up today Feeling the way I always do Oh, 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 hungry for something that I can't eat Then I hear the beat The rhythm of town starts calling me down It's like a message from high above Oh, 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 pulling me out to the smiles on the streets that I love Good morning, UCC Every day like an open door Every night is a fantasy Every sound like a symphony
round of applause to the nicest kids in town. silly to read from the Bible after that, man. <laughs> A reading from the book of Psalm. Hear what God's Spirit is saying to you. To the leader of David, a psalm. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all of my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. 
Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you're there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for the darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed me in my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. Here ends the reading of words that give us insight on God. May God grant us wisdom and courage for interpretation. Friends, will you pray with me? Holy One, you have created us as we are. Help us to accept ourselves as you have already accepted us. Help us to recognize that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. May we find the confidence to make this world a more loving and more accepting place. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every one of our hearts be pleasing to you and acceptable in your sight, O God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I love hairspray. I love the story. I love the colors, the vibrant 60s kind of uh, theme of hairspray. I love the music and, of course, the intricate choreography. It's a lot of fun, and it's a powerful story. In fact, there's a lot going on in Hairspray, even more than I think we might realize on a first watch. It is, of course, about the integration of a local TV show, The Corny Collins Show, a Baltimore teenage dance program, it's also about what it's like to be a teenager. It's about what it's like to have a crush. It's about what it's like to find love across lines of diversity. It's about what it's like to rekindle an aging love. It's about what jealousy can do to you. And at its heart, it is about loving yourself for who you are recognizing who you are and being okay with that. Tracy Turnblad is the main character and she is not a conventional leading lady. She doesn't have the size that she's supposed to have. Her hair is too tall too. And she knows who she is, which means that she is unafraid to be herself out in the world and that makes people uncomfortable. You ever found that? That if you know who you are and you're not afraid to be who you are, it can make people uncomfortable? And yet what she knows is that in order to really be happy and to thrive in life, you have to be who you are. And all the characters who experience any growth over the course of the play discover exactly that, that they have to be who they are in order to be happy and to really thrive in their lives. There's something incredibly liberating about authenticity, isn't there? I mean, have you ever had to present yourself as something other than you are? Have you ever had to pretend to be somebody you weren't? 
Maybe even in church. Have you ever been made to feel like you don't believe exactly the right things? Like you have to pretend to believe something that maybe you don't? There's something incredibly freeing about authenticity, about being able to be who you are. It's liberating. It's freeing. It's grounding. And that, I think, at its heart is what the psalm that we heard just a moment ago is about. It's a beautiful psalm. I love this psalm. It's one of the most beautiful pieces in all of Scripture, I think. It's also frequently quoted and frequently taken out of context. So what I mean is, the way that I usually hear the psalm applied is as a way to try and define life in the 21st century, how life begins. Let me say decidedly, that is not what this psalm is about. You know this, you knit me together in my mother's womb stuff. Um, That is not to be applied as a way to define when life begins in the 21st century. In fact, in the ancient world, they define life as starting later than we do today. Uh, Childbirth was so dangerous that a lot of times children didn't make it. Remember that naming ceremony of Jesus in the temple where eight days later he goes in and is given a name? That's because they waited to make sure the kid was going to make it before they declared the kid alive. In fact, in some cultures, they waited a year to determine that the child was actually alive. And even then, the child was considered property, not a human life. So that's all to say that that's not what this scripture is about. It's not about determining life. What it's about is intimacy with God. The psalmist recognizes that God already knows us better than we know ourselves. And so we must be true to ourselves. It's also a reflection that God promises to be with us at all times and through all things and will never abandon us. I mean, it's beautiful, right? That God knows us before we are even born throughout our lives and even beyond death, that God has promised to be with us, to never let us go, no matter if we're going through jubilant times or if we're going through times of deep despair, that God has promised to be with us. Even if we don't feel God's presence, God is there. And the psalmist puts it like this, where can I go to escape your presence, God? If I ascend to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in Sheol, in the underworld, you're there too. If I were to go on the wings of the morning and go to the farthest reaches of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. That means no matter where we are, no matter what we're going through, God is with us. God has promised to be there in the midst of it. And that's incredibly powerful, isn't it? That God is with us through all things. I love this notion, too, that God knows us so well because God is with us all the time that God already knows our authentic selves sometimes before we do. And so if we we try to lie about who we are, if we try to be something or somebody that we're not, uh, we're not living into who God created us to be. Now, being our authentic selves, I don't think means that we can just act however we want We are Jesus followers, after all. I know some people, especially religious folks, like to be, well, this is the way God made me, take it or leave it. Here I am, but I don't think that's what this is about. As followers of Jesus, we are always called to be doing better, right? To be more compassionate, more loving, to try to be more welcoming, to live more fully into God's call for us, to try and make a peaceful world and to let go of those things that separate us from loving God and from loving one another. But we are called to be the best versions of ourselves that we can be, to constantly be be trying to live more fully into who God created us to be. And so I think that means that God has given each of us gifts that, that we are called to share with one another and with the world to make this world a better place. It means that, that God has called us to, to be who we are authentically, to embrace those gifts that God has created us to love who we love, and that we should embrace that and not deny it. That even if, say, our gender identity is different than what we were assigned at birth, that God already knows that, and God loves us as we are. 
that God has called us to be our authentic selves. And whenever we own that, whenever we are willing to embrace that, then we flourish in our lives. I love the music of Hairspray, because that's what it's about. It's about authenticity in the world. The powerful song that we heard just a few moments ago about knowing where you've been, about knowing who you are, about knowing what your struggles have been, or what the struggles of an oppressed group have been, inform who you are in that moment. But you know that it doesn't have to define you, that, that you're going forward, you're making progress. That at the end of the day, Hairspray is about progress. The last song is, you can't stop the beat. And it means that, you know, no matter how much you try to stop progress, it's coming. You can't stop it. You might be able to slow it down for a while, but you can't stop progress. I love that. You can't stop the beat. It's coming. So you may as well dance along with the song. Hairspray is about authenticity, about living authentic lives. Friends, you, each and every one of you, are fearfully and wonderfully made. Some of you are even fabulous. <laughs> Embrace that wonderful gift of your life and share it with the world. The world needs more authentic people. The world needs more people who are kind and loving and living into who God created you to be and encouraging other people to do that too. Can't stop the beat, so why don't we go ahead and dance along. May it be so, and amen. <laughs> Friends, we know that God has called us to be our authentic selves, to go out in the world and make it a better place. We know that God is moving us more towards the kingdom of God with each passing day. And so we give deep thanks. We know that we can't stop the beat. So may we go forth and join it. Amen. Stop my life at home when I see the Christmas hand. If you don't like the way I look, well, I just don't give a damn. Cause the world keeps spinning round and round, and my heart keeps the speed of speed of sound. I was lost till I heard the drums fade away. Woo!
feet, friends. Go forth dancing and singing out into the world. Amen.